Hey, thanks for watching my video today. Today we're doing a paper lantern makeover. And while I love the colors of this, they do not currently go in my art studio. I have more muted, calming tones in there and the blue seem just a little bright. So you're gonna use your basic acrylic craft paint. And I used white to begin with, and then I moved on to a muted gray color. And I did several passes on the design, the blue design, because it needed to be covered a little bit more saturated. Also, very little water, because if you get it too wet, you're going to tear the thing, and you do not want to have to repair this while you're doing it. It just works better if you use just a smaller brush as well. I started with this big brush and then I moved on to a smaller brush as you can see here. You can just more fine tune it that way. So most often I like to have more of an organic uh, print or design and so with this I am just mixing a couple of very pale toned colors and just whatever comes to mind. I really like how the gray covered the blue design on this. It made it seem, although you can't see in this light very well, more of like a very pale gray lavender. So I just kind of went around and did whatever. It's really whatever you want, whatever design you're looking for. And uh, just keep going until you decide that it is at a point where you like it. And I really wound up liking how all the designs uh, work together. Okay, so here is a hand knotted beaded wood beads uh, embellishment I made to put on and dangle on the bottom of the lantern itself. So here's my trusty tape needle, if you will. And while a lot of people just string these beads on, I wanted to do some knotting in between and so what you'll see here, you can see it a little bit better a little farther down in the video, uh, how I do that. I used to work for a jewelry designer and we did a lot of hand knotting and it can be kind of therapeutic and fun uh, to do and to try. Um, in here, what you want to do, whatever string or yarn you use, you're going to wrap it around and make a little almost not of it. You're gonna hold on to the part of the loop that is close to the bead. Hold on to both of them as you knot because the goal here is to work the knot down close to the bead. And if you just pull it outright, it's gonna be far away from that bead. So you just want to keep holding the loop and the bead. I can't stress that enough and then kind of pull it with your fingers a little bit at a time. You'll see a little farther down. I know I didn't get a great shot here, but you'll see it a little farther down. I do it again. And what that does is it just makes a really nice looking strand. 
uh, it, it's a kind of different than what you're seeing out there lately but I like it I wanted to try something different and I have no method to the pattern it's too small one big one small too big whatever so whatever you like it's really whatever you like so have fun Okay, so here I am again making a tassel. If you saw my lamp video, you saw me make tassels in that, and you can find many videos on that, so I didn't spend a lot of time on this, but I will say get a good pair of scissors because those scissors were not good. They're just kind of old, but I opted to move on to my fabric scissors and it cut very nicely. So if you want to know how to do a tassel, you know, pay attention or go to another video or my other video and you'll see it's pretty easy at this age most people I think know how to do it so you know this is what I wanted to put on the bottom of my strand of beads to give it just a little extra flair just that little extra oomph of design so I liked in the end how it all did turn out and you'll see farther down I did a really poor excuse for a pom-pom close to the lantern when you take a look at that picture. So anyway, moving on. So I got a little lost here, I will be honest. I was trying to make a loop so that I could use the end of the bead strand to loop through and tie it and it got to be a little bit out of control and so what I think I wound up doing was I just cut off the bits of the strand that were hanging down and then I just glued the tassel on the other one just on the very end. You can't see the difference and then I wrapped it around a couple of times like I'm doing here I think it makes it a little bit more finished and you can't see all that rigmarole going on underneath so uh, I think I think that looks best but partly the issue was the yarn I think where it just did not look right knotted onto the other piece so oh and that spatula that spatula is for a face mask and the Dollar Tree has those and they work really well for dealing with hot glue and tamping things down so if you are a crafter pick one up it's cheap
here's a shot of a different way to use the beads going around the lantern if you wanted to. So here's an extra belt loop or buckle or whatever I had hanging around and I decided I wanted to add it to what I'll be hanging it from. I just wanted, uh, I guess, a hanger. And so I'm also going to use a little bit of yarn to wrap around here to give it a more finished look. And then I attach it to the lantern. And really, it's just a simple braid. That's it. You know, make it as long as you want, as long as you need to, or do whatever you want. It's really up to you. That's the great thing about DIY. It's really your creativity and you do whatever you want to do. Here is the finished lantern. I think it looks awesome. It'd probably look pretty with fairy lights inside. I still would not leave those unattended for very long if you do, but uh, I think it's beautiful and I'm happy. So if you want to see more videos of anything, let me know, comment, subscribe if you like. I'm gonna do a lot more of these videos, craft my stash, craft my trash, DIYs, and I hope it adds some fun to your day. Take care.